I was I was not here. Did anyone find the other? All in favor? So we may just uh be needing minutes uh November nineteenth. Can you get a motion to approve? Move approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. Jason. Jason. Uh, Jason. 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 And uh, any corrections or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Yeah. So the next item is the superintendent's re operations report. And I asked Dave to stop after each item now instead of going down through and going back and and uh, so I'm discussing each one. We'll, we'll stop after each item and see if there's anyone, any discussion on it. Go ahead, Dave. Okay, thank you, Ben. Um, copy the monthly report of operations for the month of November is included in your packet. Our average ethanol flow for the month was 1.1 MGD. Our normally was, again, well within our permitted limits. The average 99 acceptable for both uh, VOD and TSS. Global, uh, with ethanol concentration of four and two milligrams per liter respectively. Uh, copy of the pump station flows for the month of November. You can include the packet. I apologize for the same one. The original packet. Um, uh, there was some erroneous flow data from Pine Point Pump Station. Uh, this was the result of the activity around the fourth main break. We did have some high flow recorded on the Coastal Way Pump Station, and we are trying to figure out um, what was the cost of that. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, on the, uh, the main break that we had, um, do you have a tally of the total cost? Any further questions on that item? Substation close. Uh, safety works. Uh, we, um, we heard via email from Safety Works that the air monitoring for the particulates they conducted during our scheduled change out of the carbon at Pump Station 11 came in below the permissible explosion limit. Consequently, we are not required to use respirators during the change of carbon. And that uh, minimal updates to our respiratory program are required at this time. Moving on. Um, we were able to assist the town of Rumford by providing them with some surplus pumps that we had uh, replaced at one of our pump stations several years ago. These pumps were over 730 plus years old and will be used for the to replace failed pumps at an existing pump station that is scheduled for the next couple of years. So I can assume they picked up all the cost of the uh, ship on that They came down with that. Yeah, just a question, how did they know that we had pumps available? Was there a... There were Smith & Marvelous pumps. They were working with uh, a local Representative, and he knew the inventory that we had. Yeah. So, uh, on December 2nd, the uh, Wells Sanitary District came to the Scarborough Road to review the, uh, the uh, district facilities and operations. Uh, by all accounts, the flow went very well, and it was much appreciated as well staff. They provided us some, with some very nice pizza for lunch that day. Was it home in? Is that what they said? It was very nice pizza. Well, I thought it was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was it homemade? That was my favorite. I think Dave was in the minority. I appreciate the Wells Sanitary District and I appreciate the welcoming tone that everyone had. And it was extremely informative and extremely uh, high opening. Process and how it's run there. It was very helpful to myself and to my group. I truly appreciate it. Thank you, Dave. Um, moving on. On December 4th, uh, the district had a budgetary change session, which would in turn be discussed potential future upgrades and approaches, including one 
modifications to some pump station controls to reduce call-outs. Uh, on December 8th, the Clan Break restaurant hosted a uh, Jet Sea Fat Toy and Lease Training Seminar. Jake Kenneth and I attended the meeting and provided an overview of the Clan Break's Boost Trap and the Scarborough Sanitary District College Program. And this past month, we received two order complaints, one at 170 Pine Point Road, um, which we received on the 3rd of December. And we received a call from Kate McKay regarding noise coming from our vent pipes on our own. Uh, they already had installed the air valve, and the problem is still uh, present. This time, I'm not sure uh, where the source of the order is. Um, I'm scheduled to go out there at the beginning of next week. And the other one was on Iris Drive, the Iris Drive, and December 7th, I received a call from Brian McClure complaining about an ongoing foul order. He had begun uh, noticing about six to eight months ago in that area. Uh, this is in the general area around pump station number two, and uh, we have received several complaints from this area over the past year. The orders are sporadic and hard to determine the exact source. Uh, Proposed 2016 work at Home Station 1 should help mitigate these issues. Mr. Chair, I have a couple questions. Um, first, uh, 175 Point Road, I was just wondering, have you been in the home gate? I haven't. It, all the, um, the odor was outside. Outside. I was just wondering if it was due to some plumbing issues inside that was causing that. One-way air vent that will not to work properly, yeah. or a dry vent, or I mean dry trap, or something like that. I, I actually have not had an opportunity to even visit the property at all. Yeah. But in discussions with our the odor is not inside the house. Can you blame it on the marsh? <laughs> that one goes for Irish Drive too, doesn't it? Yeah, it's right there. Oh, Rob. Uh, Hey, uh, can you give us an update uh, on coordination with the town to, to their ongoing review of the potential of crossing the turnpike and sanitary? Um, I can give an update of what I know. Uh, the Turnpike report is still in development. I haven't seen anything since the last time I've spoke, spoken to you uh, about it. Um, at the last meeting, I, my recollection was I had just visited um, over at Nunsuch Golf Course with Warden Kern to look at as built plans of the existing sewer system that's over there and um, with Warden Kern and the town. Um, and at that time, I provided them with some flow data uh, from our various pump stations that they're discharging to. And I haven't received anything since then. I've never and they haven't submitted anything to you at all for any consideration of what they're doing? Other than the contract, the initial contract. Okay. Um, do you know if there's a time certain on when they need to have something for the town? Yeah, uh, there certainly is a time constraint in the, in the contract. I don't, I don't know what it is off the top of my I remember seeing it now. I don't recall. Yeah. Find out for them. Yeah, I, I, I did run into Dan Bacon earlier today, and he, he had just mentioned that at some point they there needs to be a powwow with us in the town and come to a conclusion of where this needs to head and whatnot and what the best alternatives are. Just let you know, John. I think it would be prudent at some point um, for um, possibly the chairman and the superintendent to meet with at least the town manager to have a brief discussion for the sake of clarity on what they anticipate the process to be, what they think their responsibilities and our responsibilities will be. I know the superintendent has had some discussion. Um, but this will be uh, a potentially a very complicated political event with two separate and distinct political bodies here dealing with 
contracts, finance, um, controls, uh, budget budgetary controls, and I think uh, I think showing uh, I think we need to show interest, and I think we need to be sure that they understand that we are going to have to um, come to mutual agreement on what the process. Um, ought to be and how what the mechanics are going to be and how this is all going to work. We did, we did this once before back in the late 80s in partnership with the town. Um, and uh, and there were, um, there was pretty good general agreement between district staff and, uh, and the town staff on what the um, what the process ought to be, but there was a little bit of discussion that was necessary to be had between the elected bodies of the two organizations to kind of clear the air and explain um, some of the some of the costs that we anticipated that, that were going to be necessary and uh, that the district was not going to bear certain costs associated with the project that some of the elected officials on the town side, town councilors, um, held held opinions or hopes that the district would absorb certain costs. Um, and so, um, to be sure that there's no surprises, political surprises, far down the, the path of this project, I think it really would be prudent to um, make sure that we have some initial discussions and explain that we'd like to be engaged with them and that we have concerns that need to be discussed. Because um, this can be complex. Um, it can be accomplished effectively as it was the last time we did a mutual project of this type. Um, but it also can be filled with confusion and pitfalls depending on how it's managed, how who's in charge, is it done by committees? Is it done by staff individuals? You know, how's the funding going to be raised and cash flows and timetables, et cetera. So I just think it's getting to be time, I think, for... I think after the first of the year, of course, you said, I mean, how long we we we'll get together and yeah. get some dates. Thank you, John. Yeah. Yeah. To follow up on that, I'm curious, did... We have a formal agreement when the Haggis Parkway project went on the way between the town and the city district. And if so, maybe that one should be shared with the town manager so he has an, uh, at least uh, a heads up of what kind of understanding we're under how the project should run. You know, it could be yeah, I was thinking job. about the eight corners, uh, eight corners sewer project more than the Hygis Parkway project. The Eight Corners project was a much bigger project than the Hygis Parkway was. More, more properties were impacted uh, with lots more homeowners and property owners involved. Um, issues of running sewer service by existing properties mm -hmm. and were those properties going to then be required to connect to the sewer or not. Uh, it's just a lot of issues that the public will have when when this process starts moving forward that I think we need to have some idea of what the policies are going to be or what the legal requirements would be, you know, as we move forward. So I think we need to start that conversation just to avoid problems uh, down the road or things that might be easily dealt with in advance. but. In hindsight, if you're looking back on it, saying we should have talked about that earlier, we could have avoided this. So I'm, I'm just, I just really think it would be uh, a good, a good step for us to take to, to reach out and initiate that process. Thank you. I think it makes sense. So Dave and I, if we meet like, is it the third Wednesday? Be the third Wednesday next month. So we meet anyway around around lunchtime to to, to go over what's going to be presented at the following meeting. So maybe we could schedule that meeting around that afternoon. Thank you for bringing that up, Joe. Okay, thank you. Any more, any more questions for the superintendent on the report? Or? So we'll move on to the uh, correspondence. 
on November 24th, to see a successful notice on enforcement investigation with regard to the fourth main break on Snow's County Road on the 18th of November. As a result of the investigation, the commission did not take any action with regards to this incident. As you recall, the fourth main break was a result of a deep safe marking error. The district was on site when the break occurred and was able to shut down the pump station quickly, thus reducing the volume of the SSL. This bear mobilized quickly and, I, and had the repairs made by 6 p.m. that night. Yeah, question here. Yeah. Um, was this was this letter regarding the dig safe operation or i was under the impression that we were not subject to the regulation by the public utilities commission we, we do not follow the dig safe but because a, another contractor broke the um, utility uh, an, an underground utility that is beholden to dig safe uh, it brings them into the loop and that you know you would not get fined by that. Verizon broke it, so they're under PUC. Yeah. Okay, so the investigation was of the event, but not of the sanitary district. Yes, exactly. So with the letter, it talks about possible uh, sending someone to school or something here, or train. We do that annually. But is this part of, part of the break? Is that going to be an additional yeah. requirement? The Dig uh, Safe organization actually once a year in, in the uh, area offers some very good training courses and um, I make an effort, uh, to, an effort to make sure my uh, staff gets to that. It's a nice refreshing course and that, that means that's the material. And according to the lab, there's no charge for it. So. Can you send more than one? Or? Mm -hmm. I, I, had, I think I had five guys go to the last time. Another question sort of related to that, David, what, uh, marking those out, um, are we using plans to do that or are you using any kind of locating technology for that as well too? Do you use magnetic locators or anything like that? It was permastrand type. So no tape off the top of it or anything? No, it was put in 30 years ago, there was no tape over the top of it. Um, so we're using plans in that instance. As we're moving forward, I have now we requiring both um, detectable marking tape and trace of wire over um, plastic pipe. So, but unfortunately we have a lot of piping around that. We can't. Uh, when we're marking some of that old pipe like that, do we give, uh, I know like on some of the underground utilities, they'll actually give you two lines and say we're somewhere within within this range. So the marking, you've got a, you can, I think it's three feet either way. Yeah. You know, when you, when you give a mark, you, there's a variation that you're automatically given that the contractor has to. So you mark the center line and you have three feet either side yeah. of center line. Yeah. What if, you know, when we have an issue where we know that we don't have accurate plans, what recourse do we have to say to the contractor, you know, you need you to know. Yeah. We can require the hand to get it located. But do you think where we don't have located pipe, or a locator or a metal pipe, that we should require some test pitting? That'd be an awful lot of test pitting. You know, um, you know, our record drawings are accurate. The gentleman just made a mistake uh, in this case here. Um, our record drawings were accurate. Well, they were accurate. And then. That was uh, the it's 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 the the piping uh, made a jog off of the, the road um, and he missed it on the drawings um, was thought he was in a different location on the drawings he, he made an error looking at the drawings um, you know he you know he fully admits it you know? um, but. We have a lot of plastic pipe out there, and, and we do require, when we're uncertain uh, where the pipe is, we do require the contractor to dig it. Um, when, when the inspector is unsure of it, he, um, we, I encourage him to make sure he gets another set of pair, pair of eyes on it to help him locate it. Um, 
So, so the number one is stop a, start a policy to have them excavate every time we don't, you know, have a, an actual detectable pipe down there. That'd be a lot of extra digging. So David told me that we we located 400 uh, dig safe locations in the last year. Was it last year and a half? Last year and a half. So out of those 400 locations, there were two problems. One was over here on. Grand Road. Grand Road, and the other one was the. And both of those were how they were. Um, I, I think the one on Grand Road was more of a, uh, an error on the plans. We're, we're showing. Well, that one was an error on, as a result of the. It was very difficult to um, interpret the plans because the intersection has changed so much. Yeah. Well, then maybe that's an that indication case. where we say, that's hey, you know. No, it, yeah. it, it should, that one should have been hand up. You know, it's our facilities. If somebody's connecting into it or planning to put something near us, you know, I, I, I've worked near the high pressure gas mains, and we spent a whole day because their guy was on top of the main digging it. So, you know, I, somebody's going to do work near our mains. I think we should take the necessary precautions. That's the uh, the board's desire to have them dig every, dig, you know, dig and locate every pipe bolt and enforce it. You know, if we don't have accurate locations, Charlie, did you wanna? Yeah, I I, I just think that um, the the policy should be being aware of the sensitivity of the location and the and the threat to the system. Um, I think if we're digging over a piece of six-inch plastic pipe with low flow, um, I'm not as nervous as I am digging over a force main that's carrying a million gallons a day, you know, uh, wastewater. And I think, I think uh, if we want to write out a new policy, I guess we could have the superintendent draft one. But I think we express our concern today of about making those judgment calls and being careful and he's professional and knowledgeable enough I think to follow through with that without uh, without having to have a blanket procedure because I think it would be uh, in a lot of cases it would fall on the district to pay the expense to excavate and locate if we don't know where our lines are um, and we can't locate them then it becomes our responsibility not the contractor's responsibility and I think I think certainly it would be we would be more certain in every occasion if we were hand digging every single location but I just don't think the expense of doing that is something that the risk would generally require us require us to do I don't know if I've explained that no, I think, very I think efficiently but I think you're right about the if it's a six inch gravity you do, do, the best, do the best you can, but if it's a, it's a force main that we're going to be digging over, maybe we should be hand digging that if you don't have a good handle on location. But he thought he had a good handle on location when he marked it out. Obviously, he didn't, but, you know. Yeah, yeah I understand that. And, uh, uh, you know, that occurred. And I'm just saying, when we're looking at things in the future, if we have some uncertainty, we should let people know that. Well, in this case, and I'm not saying... He didn't think he had uncertainty. In other cases, where we have had uncertainty or it was a very risky excavation, I have made sure that the uh, contractor has taken uh, precautions um, to, um, uh, to, number one, locate the pipe, and number two, be prepared uh, if a break does occur. Uh, we had a giving an example down on Easton Village. They were putting in the culvert there on, on the trail. And we had three force mains that crossed that culvert. And I worked with the contractor on that. We made sure we had good locations on the pipe. Uh, all three pipes were going to be exposed and hanging. Uh, we made sure we had materials available on site to repair the pipe. We had made sure we had septage haulers at the pump stations to in operators to shut down the pump stations immediately. So depending on the situation, I think the district does a very good job 
on assessing the risk, uh, the vulnerability, and uh, applies prudent precautions. I think we're already there. Okay. I like your explanation. We'll see what happens in the future. Well, just one more thing to sort of complete the discussion is uh, there are some in-pipe technologies that you might want to take a look at. They were kind of expensive a few years ago where you basically put a probe down the pipe and sent out a signal over the top of the pipe. You know, they're quite pricey, but, you know, they may have come down in price over the last couple of years. I've looked at those in the past, and, and they were just exorbitant at yeah, the time. Yeah. I can certainly take another look at it and see what, you know, how the technology has advanced. They're also limited by depth. That's true, yeah. And if there's overhead wires, they're also limited by that. That's true, yeah. Okay. So Thank you. We'll move on to the next item. Um, uh, the Chapter 30, uh, 530 certification um, has required to submit a D to DEP the annual Chapter 530 certification form to utilize to identify any significant changes to our flow or operation that may increase the toxicity of our waste That's on the form. We have had no such changes. So, I'm in my normal business. Uh, Unitel has requested a workshop with the trustees prior to our January meeting to further the discussions of the proposed metering station. The environmental consultant has agreed to be present at the workshop to address the board's environmental permitting questions as well. Uh, Unitel has also requested permission to obtain a land appraisal prior to that time. Last month, we had tentatively agreed to a January workshop to discuss the investment policy. I recommend keeping the January workshop as scheduled and scheduling the Unitel workshop prior to the regular monthly meeting in February. Sounds good to me. No, uh, we'll reschedule that workshop meeting in February with Unitil at an hour before. Is that enough time? 6.30. Second. Second. Well, I don't know. Was there any time pressure from Unitil with regard to, you know, not meeting until until February? Uh, I talked to them and they didn't express any concern. Okay. Moving into February. Okay. So why are you involved in that? Unless someone has an objection. So new business. Someone from the Yes. Uh, there's a gentleman um, uh, from the Genetic Fund, the Justice. Uh, SW Web Company, uh, which is located in Mr. Mr. Chairman, before we proceed with this item, I have a potential conflict of interest and would like to recuse myself from consideration. That's fine. Uh, SW Web Company has uh, which is located at 150 Coastal Service Way in South Florida. Um, on behalf of FWF, Daniel Technics is requesting district approval to connect the discharge into the sewer for sanitary wastewater flow from the proposed 28,085 square foot office building warehouse showroom addition to be connected to their existing 68,950 square foot facility. The estimated wastewater flow for this addition is at 100 gallons per day. This project is outside of the original sewer service area, but within the Walter C. Nielsen Business Park. The business park is located in both South Scarborough and South Portland. All the wastewater from the park flows into the uh, Scarborough Sanitary District system near the district's coastal park pump station. The existing building was approved August 28, 2003. The approval was for wastewater flow of 4,000 gallons per day and limited the discharge of the wastewater between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. They regulated this through the use of an on-site pump station. In 2015, the peak water, uh, peak water water usage was 316 gallons per day. Um, I provided a supplemental letter from Sebago Technics that describes that uh, what they're going to do is install an internal pump station in the addition that will pump into the existing uh, plumbing system within the existing building and continue to flow through 
uh, and be regulated by that existing uh, pump station that has uh, timers on board to regulate the flow. Um, let's see. Capacity. No capacity reserve fee would be due at this time. The project flow of 416 gallons per day is well below the already approved 4,000 gallons per day. Please note that any wastewater flows above the approved allocation are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. Uh, the wastewater flow is limited to 4,000 gallons per day of sanitary waste. Any future flows in excess of the amount of flow uh, or characteristics are subject to additional approvals. Uh, the September 25th, 2003 agreement between FW Web and the Scarborough Sanitary District, as ex executed on September 25th, 2003, is fully in effect. And uh, this approval does not modify, alter, or amend that agreement in any way. Final plans shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to the issuance of the permits and professionally surveyed electronic geo reference CAD drawings for the scan PDF for the CAD drawing and scan paper copy be submitted to the district department of the project. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, with the caveats attached. Second. I had a question on the letter. That's all floor drains in the warehouse. Do we have a uh, we call them, uh, like storage underneath there in case they leave them under the gas tanks? Um, we, 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 we have had that. We have had the use of um, uh, oil water separators, the sand and oil water separators uh, in in instances where we had floor drains, um, this is a fairly low risk um, uh, situation uh, with regards to oil water separation. Um, the internal plumbing codes in this case would not require um, separators in this application. Um, uh, there is no maintenance of, of trucks in, in the facility. It's just for loading and unloading purposes. Um, and in addition to that, the, uh, we would have actually two uh, pump stations. In this case, the new uh, pump station that services the uh, addition, uh, which would act as in, its, in and of itself as a separator, and also the 2,000-gallon uh, septic tank that um, serves as the holding tank for the um, uh, metering of the wastewater flow, which also would act as a separate. So in this case here, we do not see the need for it. Anyone else, John? Do we have an existing sampling manhole on yes, the discharge line? Yes. I'm curious, uh, are there any other areas that we might have um, facilities going into South Portland that would be better served by the Scarborough system? Um, there are a few down on uh, Muzzy Road, there, there's certainly some, some areas. Um, I think we've pretty much nipped most of them. You're talking about areas, areas in South Portland that could be serviced by Scarborough? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, South Borough, <coughs> the South Borough Office Park is one, this, this location. Uh, is one runway yeah. road? Is the runway road is the one. Southport office park goes to South Portland. That's us flowing to South Portland. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we have it. We have an intermunicipal agreement with the city of South Portland that uh, governs their discharges to our sewer lines, and we have similar agreement that governs our discharge to their sewer lines. Does that answer my question? Okay. <laughs> And we would, and we would if, we, if we serviced another area, we would have to amend those agreements to take in the specific yeah, areas. Any other questions for this um, Just a, an observation again. Um, I think, Dave, when the, I'm assuming this is going to be voted and passed, when the letter goes out which explains your, the conditions of the approval, that letter will go to the owner of the property with a copy to the engineer? Uh, 
what I have been doing is I've been addressing it to the engineer, CCing the owner, but I, I have a signature requirement for the owner to sign it and return it okay. back. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So Steve Harding is here today from the Thank you. Uh, representing. I'm Steve Harding. I work with Mr. Uh, Dave, I didn't get a copy of the review uh, of the uh, condition, and I just yeah. wanted could you repeat that again? Uh, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll truncate it. A okay, bit that's fine. Uh, uh, the capacity reserve fee, there's no capacity reserve fee because it's under 4,000 gallons. But, uh, and also the wastewater is limited to the 4,000 gallons that it's already approved for. Um, the September 25th, 2003 agreement is fully in effect. This doesn't amend that agreement at all. And uh, then just final plans submitted to me prior to the approval, um, final approval, and uh, or the issuance of permits rather. Um, and finally, when their project is complete, record list. Yeah, that's fine. I just also would like to thank David for helping us through this process. It was a little bit convoluted. We weren't quite aware of the agreement that was in place, and David was very helpful in working through that. So I wanted to thank him. So any other comments before we take this motion? All in favor? Anyone that's up for Rob, is that your statement? Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, so, I'm going to oh, adoption of the 2016 budget. We had a workshop last month. Which has been in the old school for the other day. Yeah, I gave a summary in the packet. Um, the proposed budget for 2016 is included in the packet. Um, we followed the budget workshop last month that went through all of this. Uh, overall, the proposed budget reflects a total decrease before capital expenditures of $41,093.41 from the 2015 budget, which translates to a 1.3% decrease. The operating budget, including capital expenditures funded from operating revenue, is down $10,093.41 from the 2015 budget, a decrease of 0.31%. The total budget, including capital, capital expenditures, is uh, $3 million. 440,497, down $3,093.41 from the uh, 2015 budget, a decrease of 0.09%. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Second. Excellent job, Dave. To you and the uh, <coughs> staff. Just a uh, point of quick clarification here is we should probably take the negative signs off in front of those because a negative 1.3% decrease is actually an increase of 1.3%. Double negatives? Yeah, yeah. double negatives. So. Yeah. I gotcha. So we had the workshop. Were there any other things that came up after that? Italian? No, I, again, I was unable to attend the workshop to uh, my uh, huh? medical procedure, but um, um, I did feel that the budget as it was presented was very responsible, and uh, and I think any time you come in in this time frame uh, with, a, with, with essentially a no-increase budget, then I think, I think you've done a, a good job, and I was appreciative of the effort that, uh, that had been put into preparing that draft budget. I, I had uh, only minor points to make concerning that budget had I been at the meeting, but uh, but there was nothing of any consequence and no material changes to this final budget number. So I don't have any I don't have any questions or issues that I that I would need to raise. I think they I think they've done a fine job getting it this far. And, uh, seemed like the workshop you scrutinized it. And discussed it pretty thoroughly, so I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with it. Does anyone else have a comment? I, I thought it was 
grades that you can keep to, to uh, what it is are a little small, small increase versus an increase. So. And do we have any motion on this one? There's a motion on the floor. motion. Dave and Rob. All right, if there are no other questions, we'll uh, all in favor. There's a motion. Or, or Mr. Chairman. Yes. Is it possible to amend the agenda so that we can adjourn to executive session and not have to return and move that to the bottom of the list? I think we have to come back. But I don't think so because we just approved the 2016 budget. Yes, but due to personal matters, I believe we'll have to return. I, I don't see the reason why because we just approved the 2016 budget. I believe yes, is that correct, Dave? I don't think so because the 11 month budget summary is the only thing <coughs> on the agenda afterwards. We can approve that now. Um, Mr. Chair, could I suggest could I suggest we go to the executive session and return uh, and if there's no need for any vote then we can uh, just adjourn at that point in time I, I, I'm not I don't think we're going to save any time uh, by making that change we'll, we'll be leaving here at the same point in time we will save them time. They could leave now. I think they've got a meeting on the other side. Right. I think I think we have to come back. But be fine. I didn't make a motion. It was just a point of order. Yeah. A point of clarification. <laughs> I, I think Wendy doesn't have to stay for it, but I think yeah. okay. I don't think so. I didn't doubt that. Just sad. Good okay. question. Can we take it out of order and do the budget summary before the executive summary? Our uh, executive session, and so that we only have to be able to talk to the one of us. We can do that. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Amend. Amend the agenda. Amend the agenda. Drink away from the draft. You want to adjourn? You want to amend the agenda? I don't say it. Amend the agenda. The agenda to take the budget summary before the executive session. So moved. Second. 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 Oh, so moved. All right. All in favor of moving the uh, item D ahead of item C. So, at this point, we need a uh, motion to go into executive session. No. 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 Oh, at the time. Mr. Chairman, I will approve the election. Second. All in favor. All right. And I, and I guess I'd just like to point out that the 11 month budget summary does show that we are under budget and probably going to finish under budget at year end without any big surprises in December. Okay, so um, now we have to make a motion to go to executive session. Seconded. <laughs> and to return. Okay. All in favor? <laughs>
I just wanted to um, commend the superintendent on uh, a great year, but I also noted in the report that our staff continues to give presentations to professional organizations in our, in our industry, and I think that's a great thing for him to be encouraging our staff to do, so I just wanted to publicly pat him on the back and say good job. I think it helps develop their talents and skills. and, and gives them more appreciation for some of the things that are going on uh, in their professional world. So uh, I encourage that to continue. Um, and I just, I sort of had a question uh, about a brewery that I read about um, in the uh, local newspaper last week. And I wondered if there'd been any discussions with anybody at the sanitary district concerning the location of a brewery in town. Uh, yeah, there has been, uh, um, I assume you're talking about the one up on 114? Yes. Yeah. Uh, they have been in and talked to me about it. We actually did a fairly in-depth um, review of the brewery process. Yeah, that's cool. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure that there was some communication going back and forth. So, so I wish them well, and I'm sure they'll be coming before us at some point in time. Welcome to businesses. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, and happy holidays to everybody and happy new year. I thought you were going to say that. I was going to be a. Uh, I echo uh, Charlie's sentiment relative to David and staff. Uh, just a great year. Um, overcome, you know, some of the obstacles we do during the year and uh, the spring budget process that we just went through. Uh, congratulations, congratulations to staff for their continued good work down there. And uh, also would love to uh, wish everybody a happy holiday and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I did have a comment. Uh, Dave and the staff have done an excellent job. Uh, the budget, uh, bringing in a budget with less than last year's uh, is excellent. And I uh, wish everybody a uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, you guys safe over the holidays. Jason. Uh, same comments. Congratulations to Dave and the staff on their yeah. exceptional year. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everybody out there. Thank you. Yeah. Again, I'd like to thank Dave and the staff for welcoming the Sanitary District this month. Goes on the exceptional removal rates that the process that goes on the fog class that you guys put on. Good job. Uh, thank you, Dave, for a great year. Uh, wish everyone a happy belated running. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. Uh, congratulations on a great year and uh, Merry Christmas, and uh, we'll see everyone next year. So I'd also like to. Uh, Thank Dave and the staff for a good year, and the trustees as well. The trustees have worked out this year as well for the district. And uh, wish everyone happy holidays. And Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Adjourn. <coughs>